Hello, hockey fans. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. We're on the air for the next half hour. I'm Kenny Callagher, along with Jerry Burrow. And Jerry, uh, let's dive right in. It's March Madness, and that uh, includes more than just basketball, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot of of hockey talk. We're going to talk about the wild, the wilderness, uh, the Bulldogs. And let's start with the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs had uh, two games against uh, Miami of Ohio this weekend at Amsoil Arena. And after beating them the previous weekend, the the uh, the stars aligned where they had to play him again to see who gets into the tournament, if you will. And uh, a scary moment Friday night. They were losing, but came right. back and won that game and then uh, won Saturday to advance now. And the UMD Bulldogs will move on to play North Dakota at Target Center at 4 o'clock. Right. No, the or UMD, UMD will be playing on um, mm-hmm. North Dakota down at the Target Center at 7.30. And then uh, the first game will be St. Cloud State against Denver. St. Cloud State's the number two seed, and Denver's the number three seed. And North Dakota's number one in the country. And we're 13 right now in the pairwise. Was there some thought that that Friday night game, um, you know, it almost got away from the Bulldogs, but they showed some uh, perseverance and came back right. and uh, got, they had to score three goals to come back and win the game. Yeah. Kashmir wasn't uh, as hot as he has been the last three weekends at first couple periods, but then he settled down the last five minutes of the second period and the uh, rest of the game. He shut him down, and then he really shut him down the whole night on Saturday night until the last defense made a bad error and it was two on one, and <laughs> he didn't have a chance on the play. Where was the crowd? Where was the crowd? Well, there wasn't that many there because of students out of town on break. So I don't know what they do with those extra tickets. Or resell them or try to resell yeah. them or do they really go after that? I don't know. But uh, I tell you what, it looked like half filled. You think in the playoff game? Come on. <laughs> 4,300 fans on Friday night. And I thought that's probably the lowest attendance I've ever seen at Amsoil. It's probably tickets sold too. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. But now uh, the real deal, they got, uh, you know, they're number 13, but I've, there's some winners in some of the leagues that uh, aren't in the top 16. They can take over some places. So the Bulldogs might as well just go down there and win the whole thing and get to the regions. You know, it's, it's, there's some encouraging uh, thought, at least, that, just a few weeks ago, we went to North Dakota, and even though they lost back-to-back two-to-one games, they were in those games. They right. can play with North Dakota. Oh, yes. Can they go down and pull an upset in the NCHC frozen face-off? Yeah, they can. And I, it's not a major upset because, you know, the coaches had them number one in the beginning of the season in the league, and then... Uh, they ended up fourth. And then the media had them number two in the nation for all the teams. Pairwise, uh, UMD is 13th. North Dakota is number one in the pairwise. Right. So, hey, it's a big game, though. I mean, I I don't think they'll make it if they lose. Denver and St. Cloud, then, will uh, play in the in the other game uh, later on on Friday. And, uh, I don't know, thoughts on uh, who comes out of this tournament and how it all shakes out. Now, if UMD loses this game, there's still hope that they'll make the tourney. Very slim. But... Very slim because there's going to be two teams for sure that are taking over a couple teams in the top 16 because they're so bad, but the league winner in their tournament get there. And then there's three other tournaments that, uh, like Minnesota Gophers, they win their tournament they're in. They have to win the tournament, though, but they're taking a spot again. So most likely if Minnesota won the Big Ten tournament, they probably will be taking UMD's place if they lost. Well, let's talk about Minnesota. Minnesota lost to Wisconsin on Friday, four to one, and then they reversed that and won four to one on Saturday over Wisconsin. Uh, they are the Big Ten uh, regular season champions. Uh, Minnesota Gophers finished with a regular season 
record of 19-16-0 overall. And now they will uh, get a bye in this uh, opening uh, weekend Big Ten tournament at XL Center. Thursday, Wisconsin versus Penn State. I kind of like Penn State in this game, Jer. Yep. Penn State uh, had a good season, I thought. And they, don't be surprised if they win the tournament. And they are a ranked team. They come in 14. Yeah. But they, they're they going to have to. The only way they can get in is win the tournament. And then Michigan State uh, versus Ohio State. And then Michigan will play the winner of Wisconsin-Penn State. Minnesota okay. will play the winner of Michigan State-Ohio State. Yeah, I think Minnesota has the better of the deal to play on Friday night. But uh, they have to win the tournament to get to the regions. So, And then the uh, Wisconsin Badgers uh, men overall, 8-18-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> what happened to that program? I'm sorry, yeah. And then in the Big Ten, they were 3-13. Uh, and 13. Wow. And they beat, and then they beat the Gophers too. <laughs> My goodness! Yeah. So uh, it's tournament time, and the Bulldogs—they uh, need to perform well. They need to go down to St. Paul. They need to get to the Target Center against this North Dakota team, and they just need to uh, step on that ice and uh, tell themselves, "We're going to win this game." All right. Win the whole tournament. Both and tournament. and Jerry, if they beat North Dakota, their chances to win the tournament are really good. Well, there's two good teams. I mean, Denver and St. Cloud State are no slouches. I mean, and they're good U teams. <laughs> UMD has shown that they can beat St. Cloud in St. Cloud on their own right. ring. So, I don't know. I kind of like UMD's chances. Yeah. The way they're playing the last uh, four weeks, weekends, they're very good. I think they're one of the better teams in the nation right now. The way they're playing. Hmm. Yes, coming from me. 13th and pairwise isn't too shabby in, in D1. Yeah, because they were up in the 23 and 24, so they moved up. Are they healthy? Yeah, I think they are. That's one of the things that to get to go anywhere, I always said that the goalie has to be hot. They got to be healthy, getting some scoring from the, from the third and fourth line and fifth and sixth D, and they've been doing that. And then another big thing is stay out of the penalty box. Wow. Well, that's a, a challenge at times. And, uh, you know, their special teams seem to come around. I believe they had two power play goals. Might have been Saturday night. No, Friday night they Friday had two night? power, two out of six were yeah. power plays. And then uh, Saturday night they got one power play and two shorthanded goals. Ah, so all okay. special team goals on uh, Saturday night. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Right in the first minute and a half, uh, Osterberg. Got the puck and went in all alone and boom, right between the five holes. Was Howie Hansen there? Oh, yes, he was. Yeah. <laughs> and did uh, he have uh, any insight that uh, is he, worthy? He thought that UMD was going to lose. He did? Yes. Oh. And I had just the opposite. Yeah. Well, way to go, Jerry. I like Thank you. I, I like should be the mayor. Well, it may be or the head of the president of the city council, at least. <laughs> One of the two. Uh, the 2016. Frozen Four Tournament will take place in Tampa Bay this year again. Seems like they were just there four or five years ago. Yeah. They didn't even know how it would work being in warm weather. And all of a sudden, everyone loved it. And so right away, they... I'm a little surprised they're back in Tampa Bay yeah. so quick. Well, they're going to be back in St. Paul in two years again. Yeah. And that was, what, 2011. So, yeah. Good for them. The West Regional will take place at the XL Energy Center in St. Paul, March 26th, 27th. And the Frozen Four will be played again in Tampa, Amali Arena, April 7th through the 9th. Six automatic qualifiers, 10 at-large bids. There you go. Will you be at the games? Yes, I will. I'll be at the Regions down in St. Paul, and then I'll be down in Tampa. The East Regional will take place in Albany, New York, the Midwest Regional in Cincinnati, and the Northeast Regional in Worcester, Massachusetts. A selection show March 20th, noon, on ESPN U. U. Oh, I wonder if uh, does Charter Cable get that? Charter carries it, but you got to have the package to get oh, ESPN U. Oh, the package. Yeah, if you don't have the package, you don't get it. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> See, they'll give you sports, but they won't give you the additional sports without the sports package. There you go. Uh-huh. They got me. Okay. But someone wire me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Email me, text me, uh, Facebook me. <laughs>
Uh, Minnesota Wild. Uh, you know, I, I watched the game uh, Saturday, uh, the Wild. Uh, did? Okay. Well, they had that loss against Edmonton, 2-1 to one on Thursday at home. And right, and I granted, was Granted, they had four days off. But, geez, those are just games you don't want to oh, lose. Oh, the fans were not happy mm. in that game because here's a team that had a lot of injuries. They had two of their main D out. Edmonton. Yes, and yeah. one of their top forwards. And one of the low, I mean, they're at, I think they're last place in their division. I believe they are. And uh, they come in to the wild rink and beat them up. <laughs> Connor McDavid uh, was the difference in that game. Uh, Zach Parisi had the only goal for the wild in a four to, or a two to one loss to Edmonton. But they went to Montreal and they did what they really had to do is and they won up there. They won four to one Saturday. Mikel Granlin had two goals. What the? I I fell off my chair. You had I to. I literally fell off my chair. Your your all star player <laughs> did that. I would like to uh, acknowledge <laughs> Mikel Granlin scoring uh, two goals. It's the first time he's ever done that in a NHL game. But uh, Mikel, are you going to say you're sorry for all the bad things? No, he said about no. Him? I'm <laughs> going to say Mikel, you're allowed to celebrate when you score a goal. You're allowed to raise your stick. You're allowed to do a fist. Watch some Zach Parise uh, highlight rolls of him scoring goals and be like Zach. There's just no exuberation. There's no excitement when he scores a goal, almost like he can't believe he scored a goal. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll, get, we'll stay off of Mikel Granlin. Until next game. <laughs> and uh, the Wild, uh, uh, again, winners at Montreal Saturday. They'll play games at Ottawa, New Jersey, this week. St. Patrick's Day, New Jersey. Oh, that yeah, could be yeah. exciting. Yeah. Uh, Mike Sislo, C- Superior uh, native, uh, went to a Superior High School over there, called up by New Jersey, still on the roster. Yeah. He was named AHL Player of the Year last month, so uh, hopefully uh, Mike can play against... Uh, player of the Month. New J- yeah, he was Player of the Month in the okay. AHL okay. last month, and hopefully he'll be on that, uh, on that roster when the Wild play New Jersey on Thursday the 17th, and then they'll come home for a matinee against Carolina 1 o'clock on the 19th. Yeah. I wonder if someone was, someone was telling me at the Wild game they might change that game to even earlier because of the Big Ten tournament. But we'll see. I think it's 1 o'clock still. Now next Sunday, the 20th, at Chicago, 7.30 NBC Sports Network. Oh, okay. National. I'm going National. I was just As a matter look- of fact, they got back-to-back national games. You've got that March 20th game at Chicago, and then they'll be home the 22nd against Los Angeles. So, And that also is NBC Sports Network. Right now, if the uh, league stopped right now, play, the Wild would be in. But uh, I was just looking, Colorado, they're fighting for the wild card. For the and last, Minnesota, uh, I believe, has two games, or at least one a, game. One game in hand? One game in hand. Okay. And so... Um, Minnesota has to play Chicago twice, L.A. Kings here, one of the Chicago games is here, San Jose, these are playoff teams, so they got, and Detroit, which is fighting for a playoff right now, they're in the playoff spot, so they got five playoff teams the rest of the season. And we play at Colorado on March 26th. Right. So that's a big game for sure. But then Colorado, though, they got uh, Nashville, St. Louis, Washington, St. Louis, Nashville, Dallas, Anaheim. So they have a little tougher and schedule. And Anaheim's playing well yeah. after a slow start. All season. right. They're up there on the top. Right. Let's see, where are they? Second place to the L.A. Kings. Amazing. Oh, they One point away. Wrong. One point away. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's amazing, yeah. The Minnesota Wilderness will have uh, home games this Friday and Saturday versus the Springfield Junior Blues Military Appreciation Weekend. Uh, the Wilderness, based in Cloquet, the Minnesota Wilderness, will be wearing one-of-a-kind military jerseys that will then be auctioned off in between periods both nights. All proceeds will be donated to military families. The Minnesota Wilderness in Cloquet, a uh, great honor to the military men and women uh, this weekend, March 18th. So, are they giving discount tickets to the military, you said? No. I don't see that here, but okay. uh, if you go in and say you're with the military, uh, maybe they will. I bet they, they will. will. Maybe yeah. they give them a free t- sure. I don't know. Yeah, they should. Are you a PA announcing that game? I am not. Okay. Nope. Okay. Because I know you get up there once in a while to do the PA I thought I was, but no. Not okay. Good. Okay. 
Hey, um, they had um, they had the state uh, youth uh, tournaments like in uh, Duluth East. Uh, got second place in the state in the Pee Wee Double A. Now this is a Chris Locker coach, right? Team. Chris Locker and his two of his nephews are on that team. Mike Locker's and Derek Locker's kid, Matt wow, and that's uh, great. Josh, that's are great. on that team. So it's a family affair on that team. Wow. But they uh, started out on Friday and they beat uh, Cottage Grove 2-1. to one. Then they played Elk River, which has a very good team, 4-3. to three. And then in the championship game yesterday, all these games are played up in Grand Rapids. And they were ahead 2-1 going into the third period. So, they, I mean, it was looking good for them. But then another power play goal by, um, what was the name of it? Um, Osseo Maple Grove tied the game, and then they got another goal toward the end. And uh, they beat Duluth East 3-2, to two, but nice Osseo showing. Osseo did? Yeah. Now, wait a second. Time out here. Okay. These games were played in Grand Rapids? Right. The Pee Wee AA mm. tournament was in Grand Trent Rapids. Trent Clatt. <laughs> Coach of Grand Rapids, beating oh, the East. You got the connection. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Interesting <laughs> little twist there, Jer. Yeah. So, oh, oh. Osseo beating East two in power Grand play Rapids. Goals. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, congratulations to Duluth East for a great showing up at the state tournament up in uh, Grand Rapids this weekend. And in Double A, hey, congratulations to Cloquet. They won two games to get third place in the Bantam Double A. So they're going to be, Cloquet's going to have a good team. They got um, Jamie Langenbrothers, one of his kids are on this team. So they they got a lot of good kids coming off this team to play for Cloquet pretty soon, next couple years, maybe some next year even. Well, my niece, her son, Plays for the Duluth Denfelt Pee Wee A team. Yep, they're at state tournament too. They had a great run, and then they made it to state and lost right. to uh, East Grand Forks okay. and Edina. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, hey, congratulations to all the teams just getting to state. That's a hard thing. Sure. That, that means you're in the top eight teams in the state. So hey, I think that's good for Northern hockey. I mean, things look like hey, we're going to have some good teams for the next three, four years. Say, what is this I heard about this Stillwater player that ripped his uh, medal off of him when they at the state tournament? Uh, Eden Prairie, one of the players, at second place. He wasn't satisfied. An Eden Prairie player? Yes. Okay. Second place right. when they're giving out the medals for second place. And uh, was it on TV? Did it get aired? I don't know if it was on TV or not because I was down there in person. But uh, well, that's pretty. I heard it from other people. That's pretty sad. Well. Some scouts say, hey, they like feistiness in some players, too. They they like the people that want to win. Yeah, at a junior so, level or higher, I get it. But yeah. high school? you got to have sportsmanship. That's what the state high school league yeah. advertises all the time. So, yes, I'm, I'm on your side. Again, that's twice in a month. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Last week we had Derek Plant on as a uh, phone-in guest of the show. That was uh, Bruce. Or I'm sorry, Bruce Plant. Yes. A phone-in guest, a head coach of Hermantown. Uh, again, congratulations to the Hermantown Hawks, winners of Class A. In convincing fashion, mind you, over a very good uh, team from, uh, would they be? Breck. Yep. Private school down in the cities. And those two teams might be start out the year 1-2 again. Start the year out next year because they, they're going to have a lot of players back on both teams. And I'm just thinking of high school hockey um, in Double A. There's going to be a lot of good teams on the west side if that's that's if all the players come back. But you're going to have teams that are really good with Zeta Tonka, who's won the Bantam Double A tournament two years in a row, had a good team. And they got upset in the sections. They're going to have a great team. Uh, Eden Prairie, Wazetta that just won the state tournament. They're, I saw their JV team a few times this year, and holy cow, half the team are six, six feet or higher. Really? And their 10th grade or, you know, ninth, ninth and 10th graders. Just amazing how big some of these kids yeah. are. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just a lot of Edina. If they get their young kids that come back, they're going to be good. They got about three kids that are going to the golfers from Edina. 
Um, we got uh, the three private schools in the Twin Cities. Benil, who didn't lose a game until sections. We got Hill Murray, that was a pretty young team that gets a lot of their players back, and they always get a couple more, you know, that can help the team. And St. Thomas Academy, so those three teams are going to be good. So it's going to be a lot of good teams out of the Twin Cities, mostly the west side. Well, how about the, uh, the Duluth teams, uh, Marshall? Uh, Marshall, they're going to need some numbers. So yeah. He has to get out there and find some players and that to come to Marshall. So, I mean, I know he's going to be working a little harder because since they went up to AA, the competition's a little harder. Duluth East, uh, Meyer Hoff was their goaltender this year. Does All he right. return next year? Uh, yes. He does? He'll return. And, hey, he just has to get his confidence back, you know. He's... He had a rough season, but I think he can do it. And then uh, Cloquet will be a lot better. They got most of their kids back. And uh, let's see, who else is in the area? Well, Grand, Blue, Grand Rapids will be if they get their young players back. Blue Denfelt, uh, of course, lost their goalie, one of the best in the state, uh, River Alander. Right. That's going to be a tough loss there. You don't replace good goalies like that. So, yeah. Mr. Smalley, Kevin, the coach of Denfield, I hope he has a backup goalie. Yeah. So. Or a backup plan, at least. I don't know the backup plan yeah. if you don't have the goalie. Yeah. <laughs> it was announced this week by the NHL that the Maple Leafs, the Blues, the Penguins, and the Jets will host outdoor games uh, next season. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs will face Detroit in an Outdoor NHL game, the 2017 Centennial Classic. The game is set to take place on January 1st, 2017 at BMO Field in Toronto as part of the celebration of the Maple Leafs' 100th season. The largest attendance overall at BMO Field in Toronto was in 2015 for a Toronto uh, soccer game hosted by the Houston Dynamo. Oh, when they hosted the Houston Dynamo in front of just 30,226 fans. Huh. Um, I don't know. They're playing in a stadium that only seats, uh, the capacity is like 32,000. Is that their football stadium that they... It's a soccer stadium. Soccer. It used to be yeah. the site of where Toronto played before the Sky Dome was played. Uh, they, okay. Uh, the 2017 Coors Light NHL Stadium Series will hit... The Penguins against the Flyers at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. Both teams entered the league in 1967. This will be the first game between the two outdoors. Uh, they're talking about a rematch a couple of years down the road in Philadelphia, said Kamish Bettman, Flyers president and St. Paul native and former North Star. Paul Holmgren said this will be a great showcase between two teams celebrating their 50th anniversary. Uh, the 2016 Tim Hortons NHL Heritage Classic will feature the Winnipeg Jets and Edmonton in a regular season outdoor game in Winnipeg at Investors Group Field. I believe that's where the uh, baseball team plays. And the 2017 Bridgestone NHL Winter Classic will feature the St. Louis Blues and the Chicago Blackhawks at Bush Stadium in St. Louis Monday, January 2nd. It's the first time the Blues will host the Winter Classic and their first appearance in a regular season outdoor game. The Blues will also be celebrating their 50th anniversary as the franchise uh, formerly known as the Minnesota North Stars. Should this game instead have been against Dallas as they're unlikely to host an outdoor game and even yet to play in one. However, the Blackhawks will be making their fifth appearance in an outdoor game. Huh. And their third appearance in the Winter Classic, and I think they've won just one. See I don't like this the way. See this what is happens going. when they win. Win. Uh, I don't Stanley like Cup. it. I don't like it one bit. Huh. The fact that Same. Chicago is going to play in their fifth outdoor game, and you've got teams that cannot host the game: Dallas, Arizona, Miami, Tampa. Put them in one of these games. Let Dallas play St. Louis. Dallas, yeah. the former franchise knows in the North Stars. <laughs> Also came into the league in in sixty seven. A lot of tie ins there, but they've chosen the Blackhawks. Well, I got to make a correction um, on the frozen face off down in the Target Center. UMD and North Dakota play at four o'clock, and then Denver and St. Cloud State. I think I said just the opposite. Four o'clock is UMD, North Dakota, seven thirty, St. Cloud State, and 
Denver. And at the same next weekend, this next weekend, boy, there's still a lot of hockey. You take away all the youth and all the high school and that. Um, every year, right after the high school season, the grade eight festival, and that's for all the seniors. And then there's another tournament with it where the 17 year, I mean, they're turning 18 this year, but they still have another year of high school. But uh, the grade A is for all the sections. So section seven will have seven A and seven double A players. So each section has both A and double A players. And they just play quarterfinals on Friday, semis on Saturday with the winners on Saturday, and then uh, finals. But what this is for is all the kids that haven't been committed or haven't made a choice of where they want to do after high school. So all the recruiters and junior coaches and come in there and watch these kids and that. And it's a, it's a great opportunity for these kids. And up north here on the 7A and 7A in double A, we got Hermantown's goalie Luke Olson and He's pretty Eric, good. Eric Goltz going to be playing. Duluth East, Alex Spencer, Shea Donovan, Ryan Peterson, and Luke Dahl will be oh, playing. Yeah. So this is a great opportunity for these kids. And, and that happens? This next weekend, Friday, Saturday, same weekend. As at? At Wakota Arena in South St. Paul. I think it's called the Woog, Doug Woog Arena now. Oh, okay. They just changed it over on Hockey Day, Minnesota, I think. No. That same day. Speaking yeah. of Hockey Day, Minnesota, the boards at Bayfront just were taken down last week. In two months, those boards stood down there. And uh, yeah, still... you told me one day. Pardon me? You told me one day. I asked somebody if we could come down and play boot hockey or use the ice until it was good. <laughs> and they said, no, the, the boards were going to come down the next day. They stood there for two months. You've got to ask different people, I think. <laughs> I, I, wish, I wish we could have had an opportunity Excuse me to go down and at least play some boot hockey on there, but uh, the boards are down at Bayfront, and we look forward to the next time uh, Duluth can host a Hockey Day Minnesota. Of course, it was announced at Stillwater. Right now, did I see that Hermantown is going to play in one of those games? I that's not sure yet, but that's a that, that's possibility a preliminary. Uh, yeah, setup. Yeah, okay, but it's not. It's up to uh, basically Fox Sports North wants to basically put their say into the games, right. but Stillwater, I wonder who they'll be playing. <laughs> hmm. That'll be discussion. We'll get more in the next couple months. The Minnesota Hockey Connection, you can find us online, minnesotahockeyconnection.com, and go to our Facebook page and like us on Facebook. And we are on YouTube. Find Minnesota Hockey Connection on YouTube, and we've got a lot of uh, things on there, some Highlight reels from Duluth East in the past and some other high school things along with our episodes. And uh, Jerry, uh, oh, and we want to thank the staff at PAC TV. Charter, uh, rather, uh, PAC Television uh, produces this show. So we do thank them as well for allowing that. And uh, final thoughts? Final thoughts. Well, hope uh, the Bulldogs can continue playing the way they have and bring ba back the trophy for a championship at the Frozen Faceoff down at the Target Center. And we'll see if the Gophers can win their tournament. If they want to get into the region, have a chance for the national title, they have to win their tournament. I'm going to make a bold prediction. Bulldogs advance. Gophers do not. Woo-hoo! <laughs> there you go, folks. Well, we'll be back here next week to drop the puck. We'll see you then.